This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollamore. If what took place on January 6, 2021 wasn't an insurrection, then the term is meaningless. If what took place on that day wasn't an insurrection, then there is no such thing as an insurrection. We all witnessed the video on the day that it happened live, being broadcast on live television. I hope you were as alarmed as I was. Being someone who worked in that building for years, in previous decades, in my younger days, uh, it was alarming to watch. It was upsetting to watch. This was a trauma for the United States of America collectively. A violent attempted overthrow of the United States government uh, by way of force in an attempt to overturn a free and fair election. It is what happened. And in subsequent days, we've learned just how dangerous it was. Almost a thousand people have been charged. I'll read you some number here. Uh, Nearly a thousand people have been charged in connection with the Capitol attack. About 140 officers, police officers, remember back the blue, blue lives matter, they say. 140 cops were attacked, assaulted that day. Uh, Roughly 325 people have been charged with assaulting, resisting, or impeding officers on that day. 106 assaults that happened with deadly or dangerous weapons on that day. About 60 people pleaded guilty, pleaded guilty to assaulting police officers. And two pipe bombs were found within stone's throw of the United States Capitol. This was an insurrection. This was an attempted overthrow. Kevin McCarthy, the vile, vile Kevin McCarthy, now Speaker of the House of Representatives, after making backroom deals with domestic terrorists, uh, gave 40,000, 40,000 plus hours of footage, sensitive footage to Tucker Carlson, an avowed white supremacist a man who takes to the airways of Fox News during his his nightly white supremacy, virulent, racist fireside chat and says things like, uh, immigrants make our country poorer and dirtier. We have a moral obligation to admit the world's poor, they tell us, even if it makes our own country poorer and dirtier and more divided. This is who he is. He had a staff member just a couple of years ago had to resign or or fired in disgrace after his racism online was uncovered. I did a video explaining that. Tucker Carlson's not a reliable character to to give this sensitive information to. It's not just sensitive because of the the video. It's sensitive because of the the security schematics of the Capitol, exit routes, sensitive information about how to keep our members of Congress and the building itself safe from attack, from attackers that might come from outside the United States and now in recent memory we know from inside the United States. And Tucker took to his program last night after having given access to this uh, and is trying to create a narrative that it didn't happen. He literally calls them just, they're sightseers. Who, who held the, the, the Capitol building in high esteem. They revered the Capitol, I think, is the words he used. We're going to get some of these clips. But I want to establish first, Tucker Carlson is a liar. He, he, he has no regard for our democracy. We've, we've, we've read text messages between him and Laura Ingram and Sean Hannity about what took place that day, about the election. We know that he doesn't believe the election was stolen. We know he doesn't believe the conspiracy theories of, I think he called her a fucking lying bitch, Sidney Powell. We know. So for him to take to the airways and try to convince Americans with this clumsy case, after we've already seen the violent imagery, imagery I can't even play here because uh, YouTube will reflexively demonetize this video and possibly suppress its distribution. 
I, I, we'll just start here. First, here's the clip about him explaining how he had unfettered access using government resources, him and his white supremacy staff to look through, to find instances that are going to convince you that what you saw with your eyes isn't what you actually saw. Here he is. Did. Before we show you the tape, a few words on the process. Our producers had unfettered access to the Capitol surveillance video. Neither the Speaker's office nor our bosses at Fox News interfered in any way with our investigation. Of the 40,000 or so hours of tape, most of it turned out to be irrelevant. Static shots of empty rooms, in some cases far from the Capitol itself. To find relevant videotape, our producers were given use of Capitol computers with advanced mapping software. That made it easy to find what we were looking for. What we didn't have was access to facial recognition software, and that was significant. For more than two years, we have wondered why some in the crowd that day who seemed to be inciting violence were never indicted for it. We assumed these were federal agents of some sort. We still assume that. And in fact, there were many examples of behavior we saw in those tapes that didn't seem to make sense. Men in civilian clothes holding doors open for protesters, escorting others through the Capitol, etc. We would love to know who these people were. But as of tonight, we don't know. And because we don't know, we're not going to put their faces on the screen and suggest they were federal agents. That would be irresponsible. So there were many mysteries we could not solve. <laughs> so what he's saying is there, um, listen, we really didn't find anything. There's civilians holding doors open for one another in the building. We don't know who they are. It is dangerous for this dolt, this dangerous white supremacist, to have access to this footage. He's not a journalist. He is not someone with an open mind and impartiality to deliver the facts, to report on the facts. He is attempting to create a narrative, and now we're learning that that narrative cannot be achieved through the footage that he received, which means it doesn't exist. It was an insurrection. Now, we're going to get to this first clip of him describing the insurrectionist mob Listen, of course, when you have uh, an hours-long event that takes place, you're going to be able to cherry-pick footage where it's not a melee. There's not violence taking place. There's going to be hallways where they're milling around and taking documents off of tables as souvenirs, taking photos as there have been thousands and thousands of photos sifted through by the Justice Department during the prosecutorial process to to um, put these... these um, alleged individuals in the spot at the moment with cell phone metadata and everything else. But watch this clumsy failure of, his, of an attempt by Tucker Carlson to make this seem, keeping in mind everything you know about what took place on January 6th, everything you've seen, that it was just sightseers who loved the Capitol. Watch this. They were orderly and meek. These were not insurrectionists, they were sightseers. Footage from inside the Capitol overturns the story you've heard about January 6th. Protesters queue up in neat little lines. They give each other tours outside the Speaker's office. They take cheerful selfies and they smile. They're not destroying the Capitol, they obviously revere the Capitol. They're there because they believe the election was stolen from them. They believe in the system. Here's the man you've heard referred to as the QAnon shaman outside the Senate chamber. Now, before we get to the QAnon shaman, Jacob Chansley, you notice the photo there, the video there, with an unbroken window. Oh, it's not violent. It was orderly. He called them orderly and meek. Orderly and meek. We've witnessed that very window from that frame being bashed out by police shields that were stolen from police after they were assaulted. <laughs> and Tucker Carlson would have you, not you, because you don't watch Tucker Carlson, most of you, the vast majority of you, but he would have his idiot audience who wants to believe this desperately he would have them believe and suspend reason and logic and understanding of what they've witnessed with their own eyes to believe this to be true. And they were all just walking in single file lines. They believed in the process. 
orderly and meek, he says, while selectively showing video that just happens to not show the video that the world watch gets smashed out by a proud boy. And then he moves on to the QAnon shaman, Jacob Chansley, who broke in to the Senate chamber with his stupid f-ing bullhorns or whatever on his, on his head. Another idiot who believes in the QAnon conspiracy, an anti-democratic insurrectionist who is in jail at this very moment for his crimes. Or I don't know if his trial is over yet. I don't follow every single case here because there are nearly a thousand. And in this next clip, he is contending that it was a tour that police officers were giving Jacob Chansley a tour of the facilities. Watch it and keep in mind while you're watching it that anytime you've been given a tour, you're not walking ahead of the tour guide. You're following someone who's giving you a tour, not leading them, having them follow you around, making sure you're not going to uh, damage something. Watch this. Over how Chansley got into the Capitol building. But according to our review of the internal surveillance video, it is very clear what happened once he got inside. Virtually every moment of his time inside the Capitol was caught on tape. The tapes show that Capitol Police never stopped Jacob Chansley. They helped him. They acted as his tour guides. Here's video of Chansley in the Senate chamber. Capitol Police officers take him to multiple entrances and even try to open locked doors for him. We counted at least nine officers who were within touching distance of unarmed Jacob Chansley. Not one of them even tried to slow him down. Chansley understood that Capitol Police were his allies. Video shows him giving thanks for them in a prayer on the floor of the Senate. The noble Christian man given a prayer for the Capitol Police. Thank you for leading me here to the Senate chamber where I can continue to break the law. Look, were, were there failures on the part of police that day? Yeah. Were there failures on the part of uh, communicating intelligence of, of the, the potential violence? Absolutely. Do I question what was happening here and why he wasn't alone? Why, why while he was alone, he wasn't arrested? Yeah, I have those questions. But to portray this as him getting a tour is just rampant, clumsy, stupid propaganda. When you're in a situation where there is a mob, and it's been explained by Michael Fanone, you know, the guy with the neck tattoos who had the heart attack on the, he's a Metropolitan Police Department, former DC Metropolitan Police Department uh, officer. He explains it very well. He talks about, look, if you're in a situation like, yeah, I could have pulled my gun and fired and killed a few of these people that were attacking me, but I would have been dead. There were thousands of them and I, or there was only one of me. You only have, you know, but a few rounds in a clip of a, of a nine millimeter, typically the, the weapon carried by po- cops. So I don't know what the, 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 the rules of engagement, as it were, were for the cops. I don't know. But this does not do away with all of that you know about the the insurrection. Um, This next clip is really just idiocy, where he's trying to say that the clip of, of, of Josh Hawley escaping was a lie because of this. The surveillance footage we reviewed shows that famous clip was a sham, edited deceptively by the January 6th committee. The clip was propaganda, not evidence. The actual videotape shows that Hawley was one of many lawmakers being ushered out of the building by Capitol Hill police officers. And in fact, Hawley was at the back of the pack. The coward tape was a lie, one of many from the January 6th committee. So according to Tucker, Josh Hawley didn't escape because other people were escaping too. (laughs) Oh, you mook you stupid haircut tucker carlson you smooth skinned smooth brained dolt you prep school wonderkin listen 
just because other people were escaping for their lives doesn't mean that Josh Hawley wasn't also escaping for his life. It doesn't also mean that the man who pumped his fist in solidarity with the insurrectionists then seemed to be escaping for his life, running for his life. The two are not in juxtaposition of one another. And then here, I'm going to finish with this, is where he's calling the 2020 election, get it right here, a grave betrayal of democracy, which flies in the face of what we've learned from discovery in the lawsuit between Dominion Voting Systems and Fox News. We know he doesn't believe it was stolen, yet he continues to perpetrate this lie and conspiracy theory on his gullible and vulnerable audience. It was underway. The protesters were angry. They believed that the election they had just voted in had been unfairly conducted. And they were right. In retrospect, it is clear the 2020 election was a grave betrayal of American democracy. Given the facts that have since emerged about that election, no honest person can deny it. What facts? What evidence do you have, Tucker Carlson? You can't just say, oh, given the evidence, and then not give it. Over 60 cases were summarily rejected by judges all across the country related to this and the Trump team's claims. They all said no. Lawyers are being disbarred because of their attempts to subvert and end American democracy. Fox News should be shuttered. No one should give them airtime. Democrats should not appear on Fox News. No Democrat, government employee or not. It is not a news network. It is a, an insurrection apologist organization now. A supporter of domestic terrorism. With Tucker Carlson, the googly-eyed feather duster, as the tip of the spear. What do you think? I'd love to know. Um, set me straight. If I'm wrong, I do not believe I am. I will be tough to convince. <laughs> but what do you think? You can call, leave me a brief voicemail, 714-576-4054. Of course, you can email me daily at dollamore.com. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on social media if that's your flavor. Um, I am at Dollamore on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Follow me there. And if you appreciate what I do, if you appreciate my commentary and my analysis of the headlines, I would appreciate it if you would consider supporting my work, helping produce what I do here. Click the join button below, become a channel member for as little as $1.99 a month, or you can click on over to patreon.com slash I doubt it podcast. Dangerous times. Dangerous times when lies are presented as truth and truth is attacked as lies. I'll see you next time until I do be genuine. Take care of one another.